The following is a presentation of KBTC Profiles. Carving gets very calming. Like, you know, I'm focused on something that I don't know what I'm going to carve. We put a piece of wood in my hand and I'll hear what it's going to be. It's a place where I sit and carve and everything is stopped. It's like I'm in my own world now, wanting to keep alive something I grew up seeing. Memory, hope, faith, life, the journey. See, it's about touching someone's heart. The history of who we are has been taken. Back in the old days, uh, in my great grandpa's days, they'd be traveling and they'll go. There was always a totem pole on the house or on a door or on a porch. And anybody that was anybody that understood it, you look at the totem, it's telling you who's here and who's head of the house, who's the guardian, who's the protector, who's the teacher, who's the elder, who's the one you go to confide in. It basically tells you who they are. Witnessing through these story poles and through culture, we don't talk that way as much anymore. And so it gets lost. And all of a sudden, people that are hungry, they want to reconnect. This is an opportunity. It's one pathway to that connection. And so for us, this potlatch pole is very specific. It's about calling the people back together to remember that we have mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual wealth. Our cultural arts and practices are the main way we transfer our knowledge from older generations to younger generations. I want to bring culture here to make real change in the lives of our relatives. And that is what I was thinking about with the story poll that our relatives would stop. They would be working on it. They would be touching it. I do want to provide that connection opportunity for people to learn if they didn't have an opportunity to learn for whatever reason. The story poll has a really strong story from Rick's personal family of his grandfather. It's his grandfather's creation. And so being able to honor him in that way feels really um, you know, important and it's a beautiful thing to have happening in our own community. Carving is healing, it's very therapeutic. You know, if you tired, stressed out, angry, bothered by something, sit down with me and I'll show you there's a carver in you. What you say you can't do, I'll show you you can. It's what I appreciate about Rick. There's an authenticity that he'll not only connect you to several generations of carving, but things that he goes, this is what I came up with on my own. This is what it looks like to be lived in the moment real. That we can take what we know and transform it in ways and decide how we carry that forward. It's those moments around carving that for me, I connect or I watch these young people or even these elders and I see the smiles on their face. And in that moment of social connection, I go, yeah, we're blessed with life. That there's an intersectionality and an intergenerationality that goes back several generations, goes forward several generations that those of us that are living in here have a responsibility to. You know, learning from Rick about him being a seventh generation carver, it brings a lot of hope to me that he's willing to share that knowledge with us and like empower us to say that you are a carver and encouraging us to pick up those tools and to learn the knowledge that he's willing to share. Culture is medicine in the way that we look at breaking down medicine not being through the Western lens, of it being something that's holistic, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, like all of those different elements. I feel like culture has that and carving is a big piece. Before I came out here to work, I was planning to move 
you know, she handed me a great idea here. Ooh, I could run with this here to share that thought to what it means to be a carver or walking with the old ones in life and in your heart, in your mind, what it means to be a carver. If they say I'm humble or they say I'm a legend and icon, ah, thank you, but I'm just a wood carver. You're as big as life. You're as big as light, Rick. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. I, I never knew how to handle that. I wasn't used to somebody complimenting me, unless it's complimenting my work. People gave me hope that society can change. Quit being the sheep. Go be the wolf. Be the brother bear and walk with purpose. Funding for this edition of KBTC Profiles provided by the KBTC Association. KBTC Profiles are available at kbtc.org.